Seeing the light is the story of a beacon. If ever you have been in the dark at sea, when the water below is as black as the sky above, and there's no sign anywhere of the way home, or of land, or of anything at all beyond deep and distant space on every side, then you'll know why, in poetry and in scripture, the beacon has always had a profound meaning for human beings. Under some circumstances, to see the light, literally, is to be saved. Well, from David Culhane now, here is the story of a light that itself needed saving. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mankind, we come before you now to give thanks for the very successful moving of this treasured historic Black Island Southeast Lighthouse, now resting securely upon its new foundation. For more than 100 years, the light graced the Mohegan Bluffs above the sea on the southeast corner of Black Island. For centuries, ships had foundered on the rocks and shoals here, 12 miles off the coast of Rhode Island. Then, in 1875, the light and its foghorn began standing guard, giving warning to mariners. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. This lighthouse would have stood here resolutely against uh, an angry sea. Over. Dr. Jerry Abbott is one of the residents who treasured the lighthouse. So I think it was very much like the character of Block Island, really these very strong Yankee, sort of uh, individual, resolute, and self determined character. They're mm -hmm. proud against the sea. They admire the sea. They love the sea. They are in awe of its beauty, but they also respect its, its danger. I spent one long and worried afternoon on a sailboat out there, groping through the fog, wondering where the rocks were, until I found the southeast light up on the cliffs here. Thousands of sailors and merchant seamen owe their lives to this light. But over the last 20 years, the islanders realized that the very existence of the lighthouse was endangered. Storms ate away at the clay bluffs, and threatened to topple the entire structure into the sea. Part of my childhood growing up, because I, I lived in a house that didn't have electricity, so the southeast light was a beacon to me. Edie Blaine was first warden, the top elected official on the island for some years. She was amazed to find that there was a faction that said, let the light go. The let her go faction would say it's going to cost too much and That's we'll just right. put up a new light, right? We'll never be able to do it. Let it go. Let's have the automated thing. And then there were the romanticists who said, we can't let it go. It's part of our heritage. You are one of the romanticists. Well, yes, I am. I mean, I can't help it. I mean, <laughs> I think of that light as a child looking at it in a, on a foggy night. The beams looked as if, to me as a child, as if they were tangible, that you could walk on those beams. I mean, that's not romanticism, that's, that's your life, right? That's right, that's my life. A group of islanders launched a four-year struggle to find the $2 million plus that it would cost to save the lighthouse to move it back from the edge of the precipice onto safer ground. The islanders themselves raised several hundred thousand dollars, and the state and federal governments also offered major contributions. But the, the new light will have a different color. Among the island residents who worked to save the lighthouse was Malcolm Greenaway, whose photographs of the landmark have been widely published around the country. It was intriguing to come back to it at different times, uh, especially in the winter time. There were times I'd be down on the beach, and there'd be some beautiful light and a beautiful scene, and I'd be the only one there. There would also be times when you'd be the only one and see a beautiful sunset. 
because there's something intrinsic in the lighthouse that says the nature of reality. It's not all good. I mean, here is a beautiful thing, but look out. There is that dark side to it. Yes, there's something beckoning because it is so lovely. The bluffs are beautiful. It's on the ocean. It sits up there high. At the same time, when you think about its intended purpose, you realize that there is danger there. There is that underside, yes. Imagine this. The lighthouse weighs an estimated 2,000 tons. How do you move something that massive 300 feet back from the sea? It's an incredibly well-built building, which is one of the reasons we can move it, I think, with uh, some confidence also. Dr. Jerry Abbott was one of the founders of the group that led the effort to save the lighthouse. After months of planning, engineering companies were hired. They excavated under the building to free it from the earth. Then came a critical two weeks this summer when the structure was set on steel tracks and literally pushed out of danger to its new location. How long have we saved it for? Should we have moved it back further? Uh, it has been calculated that we should be saved for, I think, over a century, perhaps a century and a quarter. Uh, the feeling is that perhaps we'll make some advances geotechnically that will allow us to retard the, the erosion. If not, there is a nice vacant field across the road that's owned by an old local family. Last weekend, the Southeast Lighthouse was formally rededicated. All of Block Island turned out. Edie Blaine was there. It's almost like a triumph of the human spirit. Well, of course it is. I mean, Any time that uh, the people who are saying, yes, I can do it, uh, you know, triumph over the one that says, no, I can't, mm, we can't be done, you know, that's a nice thing. We did it. That's right, we did it. And the we is very important. We did it. Dr. Jerry Abbott. I spent many nights under this lighthouse with friends. Beautiful nights watching full moons, uh, stormy nights, foggy nights, or the foghorn, but sort of, as you hear, sort of this mournful voice. Makes you think of people that have come and gone who might have stood here also, and now they'll be able to do so again. Mm -hmm. 